Yay, we're at the last lesson for chapter 6. Learning Objective G says, I can simplify and factor expressions with variables. So we're going to take everything we learned and mix it together, which means we're taking the distributive property and also using the commutative and the associative property too. So everything from this chapter all wrapped up into one. Okay, there's some vocab here that um, we're going to be using later a little bit. We talk about it in this chapter, but this is stuff that you're going to be using in future math too. So it's not one of our main vocab words for the chapter. When addition or subtraction signs separate an algebraic expression into parts, each part is called a term. So each part between operation signs is called a term. The numerical factor of a term that contains a variable is the coefficient. So in here, the coefficient is 3. Um, in here, the coefficient is 4. The coefficient is 2. A term without a variable is called a constant. So these would be constants, 7 and 9. And then like terms are terms that contain the same variables. So these both contain x, so they're like terms. These both contain n, so these are like terms. These three that are separated are just straight up terms. And then this just nine here that doesn't have a variable would be a constant. So using these words, Andrew's mother gave him a computer game and $10 for his birthday. His aunt gave him two computer games and $5. The expression x plus 10 plus 2x plus 5 where x represents the cost of each game, can be used to represent Andrew's birthday gifts. So his mom got him one game plus $10. His aunt got him two games plus $5. What is the coefficient of the term 2x? Now remember, a coefficient is the numerical factor of a term with a variable. So the coefficient was 3 here. So in 2x, the coefficient would be 2. How many terms are in this expression? So remember, each of these is a term. So one, two, three, four. So we're just doing a little bit of that new vocab stuff. It's not vocab that we have to know for this chapter. Let's flip to the next page, 496. On page 496, we're simplifying expressions with one variable. And then on page 497, we're simplifying expressions with two variables. And we're going to be doing some factoring here too, which is why our learning objective says we're simplifying and factoring expressions with variables. Now, go into this first. Equivalent expressions, remember, are two expressions that are equal. So two expressions are equivalent when the expressions have the same value, no matter what value is substituted for x. So 24x is equivalent to 4 times 6 times x. Think if x is 2. 24 times 2 is 48. 6 times 2 is 12. And 12 times 4 is 48. So these two are equivalent. All right. To simplify an algebraic expression, use properties to write an equivalent expression that has no like terms and no parentheses. So we want to get rid of these like terms. Okay, look at these numbers. 3 plus 3 equals 2 times 3. Or 3 plus 3 equals 6. x plus x equals 2x. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to cut down on the amount of terms by putting terms that we can together. We'll see this in this next example. Simplify the expression 4 times 6x. So 4 times 6x is like saying 4 times 6 times x. Now remember the associative property? We could group together these two terms that are both numbers. So then we can say 4 times 6 is 24 and then put the x with it. So we go to this one term, 24x. Let's try that down here. Let's regroup using the associative property. So 3 times x times 11, we could group it so you have 3 times 11, the two numbers together, and that times x. So 3 times 11 is 33 times x, which you can just write 33x. Let's look at another example, x plus x plus x. 
Isn't that just like saying three times X? There are three of the X's. So you could say this is like three times X or just write it with one term, three X. Okay, seven X plus eight plus X. What if we combined the X's? What if we used the commutative property, switched these two around, wrote it like seven X plus eight plus X. Oh, cheese oh Pete's. Seven X plus X plus eight. Then you could put the 7x and the 7x together. That would be 8x plus 8. So this would be our simplified expression. So again, to simplify an expression, you're um, writing an equivalent expression that has no like terms and no parentheses. Okay, look at example 2. Three friends will pay X amount of dollars for each admission to the museum, plus one dollar to view the mummy exhibit. A fourth friend will pay admission but will not view the mummy exhibit. Write and simplify an expression that re represents the total cost. So three times X plus one represents the cost of admission, X, plus the exhibit for the three friends. Now this one is the fourth friend that didn't get the mummy exhibit. So now we want to simplify this expression. So simplifying 3 times x plus 1, 3x plus 3 times 1. So 3x plus 3, and then you add the x. Then you can use the commutative property and put the x and the 3 in a different order. So 3x plus x is 4x, and then you have that plus 3. So the simplified expression is 4x plus 3. So now we're going to try that down here on example D. Write and simplify an expression for the total cost of six friends to go to the museum if only four friends view the mummy exhibit. So now we have four friends going to the museum, there's their ticket, plus the mummy. And how many? There were six friends total, four friends went to the mummy, so that means two friends did not go to the mummy, right? 2x just bought the tickets. So four friends bought the ticket and the mummy, two friends just bought the tickets. So now we can simplify this. So let's do the distributive property. 4x plus four times one is four, plus this 2x. Then we can put these two together. 2x and 4x, that would be 6x plus the 4 left over. Sorry, it's really hard to write on the corner of this book. So 6x plus 4 would be the simplified um, expression. And if you want to write it with the dollar signs like they did in the example, you could. All right, so that was simplifying expressions with one variable. We always just had x. Now we're going to do the same thing but with two variables. So this has like x and y. It says properties can be used to simplify or to factor expressions with two variables. Compare the effects of operations on numbers to the effects of operations on variables. So with the numbers 3 plus 3 plus 4, you have 2 times 3 plus 4. So this is 2 times the 3 plus 4. So this was like one variable, x, and a different variable, y. So again, x plus x plus y. It's just like 3 plus 3 plus 4. 2x and then the 1y. So we're going to try to put the variables together to simplify the expression. Number 3 for the example says simplify the expression 14y plus x plus 22y. So if you use the commutative property and flip around these two, 14y plus x becomes x plus 14y, then you use the associative property and regroup. So you have an x on its own and grouping the two y's together. That gives you x plus 14 plus 22y is 36y. Look at example four. Simplify using the distributive property. So 4 times 2x, 
right here, and 4 times y is 8x, it's 4 times 2, plus 4 times y. And then the last example here is factoring. So these we're simplifying, this we're getting into factoring. Factor the greatest, or find the greatest common factor of 27x and 18y. Now they use the prime factorization here, that little tree that we talked about before. So if they were to um, break this down, so like three times nine, that one's prime, three times three, all these are prime, that's where they got this, times the x, because you have to include the x. The 18 factor treat out, so think two times nine, this is prime, three times three gives you nine, so, and then they added the y, because you have to include the y. So the greatest common factor is nine, three times three. Or you could just think about it, like we did in the last chapter. Nine goes into 18 and nine goes into 27. So once you have the greatest common factor, then you can factor it out just like we did before. So nine times three X gives you 27 X. 9 times 2y gives you 18y. 9 times 3x is 27x. 9 times 2y is 18y. Then use the distributive property. 9 goes outside the parentheses. Inside is 3x plus 2y. So let's do these three problems together as examples. To simplify these, let's put the two terms that have x's together. So 3x plus 2x is 5x plus the 9y. So it's like you're using the commutative property to swap them around. So that would be 5x plus 9y. Now let's use the distributive property. So 7 times 3x is 21x plus 7 times y is 7y. So you have 21x plus 7y. Now we have to factor. So what's the greatest common factor here? In 12 and 8, you could both you, they can be divided by 4. So the greatest common factor is 4. 4 times 3x would give you 12x. And then 4 times 2y would give you 8y. Then use the distributive property. So put the 4 on the outside of the parentheses, 3x plus 2y on the inside. And there you have your answer. 4 times 3x plus 2y. Let's look at our last example on page 498. Example 6. The farmer's market sells fruit baskets. Each basket has three apples and one pear. Use A to represent the cost of each apple and P to represent the cost of each pair. Write and simplify an expression that represents the total cost of five baskets. So each basket has three apples and one pair. So three apples and one pair is one basket. They want five baskets, so five times that. And then it says to rewrite it with the distributive property. So 5 times 3a is 15a, and 5 times p is 5p. So the total cost of baskets will be 15a plus 5p. Time for the guided practice. Let's pair up. Raise your hand if you need help partnering up right now. Here we go. So for the guided practice, we're doing one through six. One, two, three, four, five, six. These are just like examples one, three, and four. So if we need to, we can look back at example one right here, three right here, and four right here. They're just like it. So try this one right here. Five times six X. I'm thinking, that this looks like this, five times six times x, and five times six is 30, and 30 times x can be written 30x. 
What about number two? What can you do to move these around to put like terms together? You can put these 2x and 7x together. 2 plus 7 is 9x. And then that leaves the 5y. And what about this one right here? Use the distributive property. So 4 times 2x plus 4 times 5y. 4 times 2 would be 8x plus 4 times 5 would be 20y. Now we're factoring. So what's the greatest common factor here? Let's see. 7 times 5 is 35. 7 times 4 is 28. So 7 is a good factor for both of those. So it would be 7 times 5x would give you 35x plus 7 times 4y would give you 28y. So you put the 7 on the outside of the parentheses, 5x plus 4y on the inside. Greatest common factor was 7. Okay, here's a story problem. It's just like example two right here. Just like this one with the mummy exhibit. Michaela bought five skirts at X dollars each. Three of the five skirts came with a matching top for an additional nine dollars each. Write and simplify an expression that represents the total cost. So three skirts were X plus nine. Three skirts were X plus nine plus she, there were five total, so two of the skirts were just the X. So let's use the distributive property here. Three times X plus three times nine plus this two X. So that's going to give us three X plus 27 plus two X. Put these two x and 3x, those two like terms together, and that gives you 5x plus the 27. And there you have it. And number six, this is just like example six up here with the apple and pear baskets. The gift bag from Claire Cosmetics includes five bottles of nail polish and two tubes of lip gloss. Use P to represent the cost of nail polish and G to represent the tube of lip gloss. Write and simplify an expression that represents the total cost of eight gift bags. So it has five bottles of P for polish and two tubes of G for gloss. So five bottles of five nail polish, two lip gloss. And how many gift bags are there? Eight. So it, this is just one gift bag. We need eight. So then we need to simplify this. So eight times five P would be 40 P. And eight times two G would be 16 G. So simplified, it would look like this. Now for the independent practice, page 499. We're almost to page 500. So for the independent practice today, you're doing everything. Every single problem on here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You're simplifying the expressions. It's just like we did right here, 1, 2, and 3. In 7 and 8, you're factoring. So it's just like we did in number 4. In 9 and 10, you're doing, just like example 2, the mummy exhibit, or this one right here, buying the skirts. In 11 and 12, it's just like this example here, the nail polish or the fruit basket example. So example 6. Okay, go for it. All right, let's check our answers. For lesson seven, simplifying the expression, 1x, 4x, 6x, 1 plus 4 plus 6 is 11x, 3x and 4 and 5x, that would give you 3 plus 4 plus 5, which is 12x. Here, 9 times 5x is like 9 times 5 times x, so 45x. 
Number four, put the x's together. So 3x and 13x are 16x plus the 8y. Distributive property, 7 times 3x plus 7 times 5y. So 7 times 3 is 21, 7 times 5 is 35. Here, add up the x's. 3 plus 6 plus 2 is 11x. For factoring, the greatest common factor here is 6. So 6 times 4x gives 24. 6 times 3y gives 18y. Then you make the distributive property, put the 6 outside the parentheses, 4x plus 3y on the inside. Here the greatest common factor is 8. I started doing it with 4 and realized I, <laughs> there was a greater one. So 8 times 2x gives you 16. 8 times 5y gives you 40y. Then the 8s go on the outside of the parentheses. The 2x plus 5y goes on the inside with the distributive property. Okay, eight friends go to a hockey game. Four of them bought the tickets plus the extra $6 book, and the other four just bought the tickets. So this right here distributes into 4x plus 4 times 6, which is 8x plus 24. Oh, I'm sorry, I got the 8x from putting these this 4x and this 4x together. This one I thought was tricky. So um, Gabrielle is eight, year old, eight years old. The sister is six years older, so x plus six. The mother is two times that, so two times x plus six, which would be two x plus 12. The aunt is x years older than that. So you have two x plus 12 plus another x. Put the two x and the one x together. It gives you three x plus 12. Number 11 we have six box sets that have three thrillers and two comedies. Six times three T plus six times two C using the distributive property gives you 18 T and 12 C. And here we have four sets of a gift set with four vanilla candles and six pumpkin candles using the distributive property four times four V plus four times six P gives you 16 V and 24 P. Time for the reflection. This is the last reflection for chapter six. I can simplify and factor expressions with variables. To simplify and factor expressions, we have to follow different blank, like commutative, associative, and distributive. Write the property used to simplify the equations on the line, commutative, associative, or distributive. So you're writing, you're filling in one of those words on the blank. For number two, simplify these expressions. For number three, factor the expressions. You need to find the greatest common factor. Yay, last reflection.